so hello dear students welcome to gatewala in the last lecture uh, session we did uh, uh, completed the lapis transform the properties of roc and uh, some examples of laplace transform and all the properties of laplace transform okay in today's class we will be completing the uh, system analysis using laplace transform and for that we will be studying the inverse laplace transform unilateral laplace transform and obviously the system analysis using laplace transform Okay, so we'll be studying inverse Laplace, system analysis, and the unilateral Laplace transform. These three are very important topics uh, for gate exam. Okay, so let's start. First of all, we'll study the inverse Laplace transform. Okay, uh, from the last class, uh, we can uh, simply recall that uh, whenever we have a single pole, Whenever we have a single pole, for example, this pole, whenever we have a single pole, for example, this, you remember what was the uh, uh, time domain signal which can have the Laplace transform 1 upon s minus a? I hope you all can easily recall this. 1 upon s minus a means it will be a to power a t ut means it can be a right sided signal or it can be a left sided signal that is minus e to power a t u of minus t the only difference was that for the right sided case you will take the roc which is for right sided case you will take the roc which is sigma greater than real part of a And for this, the bottom one, you will take sigma less than real part of A. Okay. So, only difference is the ROC. So, we can see that whenever we have a single pole, this is a single pole, right? Single pole at A. Whenever we have a single pole, we have two corresponding signals. We have two corresponding signals. So, one signal pole can correspond to two signals. So, for example, if there is a pole at, for example, A location, so we have two possible ROCs. We have two possible ROCs. One ROC is sigma greater than A, real part of A. And one is sigma less than real part of A. Okay, so we can say that one pole give us two ROCs and we have one more rule. If the ROC is on the right side of the pole, then pole will correspond to the right sided signal. I am writing some rules and they are very important. Okay, so the first rule is one pole can give us a right sided signal or a left sided signal. Okay. There is the first thing. Second thing is, second thing is, one pole can give us two ROCs. One pole can give us two ROCs. For example, this. If the ROC is on the right side of the pole, if the ROC is on the right side of the pole, then the pole is giving us right sided signal. If the ROC is on the left side of the pole, then the uh, pole is giving the left sided signal. Okay, simple concept. So, the concept if, if, is the, if the ROC is at the, okay, at the right side of the pole, If the ROC is at the right side of the pole, then the pole will correspond to the right sided signal. Pole will correspond to the, this is nothing. Pole will correspond to the right sided signal. Okay. Second, if the ROC is at the left side of the pole, then the pole will correspond to the left sided signal. Okay, so you just have to remember these two very important points. And now let's move on. Okay. 
so suppose we have a uh, suppose we have a laplace transform which has two poles suppose we have a laplace transform which has two poles suppose laplace transform xs has two poles one at 4 and one at minus 3 okay so we have two poles one at minus 3 one at 4 okay so, so, to find out the number of regions in which this whole S plane is divided, we have to find out the number of regions in which this whole S plane is divided. We simply draw the straight lines passing through the poles. We simply draw the vertical lines passing through the poles. So, first of all, we mark the poles. Second, we draw the straight lines passing through the pole. Okay, passing through the pole. So, we have two things. First, we mark the poles. We draw the straight lines passing through the poles. And then we find out the regions in which it is divided. There are three regions we can see. One region is sigma less than minus 3. Another region is this between the two lines. That is sigma is greater than minus 3 but less than 4. And the third ROC is sigma greater than 4. Now, so we can see that. Uh, this Laplace transform can have three possible ROCs. Okay. For example, in the previous case, in the previous case, this Laplace transform can have two ROCs. Sigma greater than A, sigma less than A. This Laplace transform can have three possible ROCs. Sigma greater than 4, minus 3 to 4, sigma less than minus 3. Okay. Now, if you have these three possible ROCs, then, then, what all signals will get okay so we can see that we can see that we have two poles we have two poles and we know that each pole can correspond to the right sided signal or left sided signal depending on the roc suppose if we take this roc sigma greater than 4 sigma greater than 4 suppose we choose this roc sigma greater than 4 then then we can see that both the this ROC is on the right side of both the poles. This ROC is on the right side of pole number four. This ROC is on the right side of pole number three. So in this ROC, both pole will correspond or both pole will give us right sided signal. Okay. Both pole will give right sided signal. Okay. Great. So, in this region, in this region, both poles will give us right sided signal. Second, if we talk about minus 3 to 4, if we talk about minus 3 to 4, we can see that in this region, this ROC is on the left side of pole number 4. Okay, we can see that this region is on the left side of pole number 4. So, in this region, pole number 4 will give us left sided signal. And this ROC is on the right side of pole number minus 3. Pole number minus 3. This ROC is on the right side of pole number minus 3. So, minus 3 will correspond to the right sided signal. Now, if we take the ROC that is sigma less than minus 3. Sigma less than minus 3. This region. Then in that case. <coughs> then in that case. We can see that. This ROC, this region is on the left side of both the poles, minus 3 and 4. So, both will give us left sided signal. Both poles will give us the left sided signal. Okay. So, I hope this point is very much clear to all of you. When the ROC is on the right side of the plane, then the pole will be give us, giving us the right sided signal. If the ROC is on the left side of the plane, the pole will be given us the uh, left side. Okay. So, let us find out the inverse of the Laplace transform. What are what all are the steps? So, suppose we have excess. Suppose Laplace transform is given to us.
ओके सो लापलेस ट्रांसफॉर्म इज गिवन टू अस ओके एंड लापलेस ट्रांसफॉर्म इज गिवन एंड इट इज इन द फॉर्म ऑफ सम न्यूमरेटर एंड सम डिनोमिनेटर सम न्यूमरेटर एंड सम डिनोमिनेटर ओके वी हैव सम न्यूमरेटर वी हैव सम डिनोमिनेटर ऑब्वियसली डिनोमिनेटर हैज सम द रूट्स ऑफ द डिनोमिनेटर आर कॉल्ड पोल्स राइट वी नो दैट सो हाउ टू फाइंड आउट द इनवर्स ऑफ दिस लेट अस सी सो स्टेप नंबर 1 step number 1 is first of all observe the degree of s in the numerator and denominator if the degree of numerator is greater than equal to degree of denominator if the degree of numerator is greater than equal to degree of denominator then degree of numerator is greater than equal to degree of denominator then divide the numerator and denominator divide the numerator by denominator okay So means we have to first perform the division. We will see this step by with the help of example. And if degree of numerator is less than degree of denominator, directly move to step two. Okay, we need not uh, do division. Move to step two. okay directly move to step 2 so what is step 2 step 2 is step 2 is so we have excess which has some numerator and now we assume that numerator is having have the degree less than denominator okay and we break the denominator into its roots so let us say the roots are p1 p2 and so on okay so roots are p1 p2 so now we do the partial fraction so partial fraction says that this will be written as p1 upon s minus p1 pt upon s minus p2 t3 upon s minus p3 and so on so this is the uh, partial fraction of uh, we have to do the partial fraction so we have to find out c1 c2 c3 coefficients we already know the poles p1 p2 p3 are simply the roots of the denominator okay now so we can see that ci is equal to s minus pi multiplied by xs at s is equal to pi okay so ci that is the ith coefficient is equal to s minus pi multiplied by xs at s equal to pi okay so this is how we can find out the coefficient ci okay and now now uh, we know the roc right we will know we will be knowing the roc because for finding out the inverse we have to know the roc otherwise uh, the question is incomplete right so uh, we already know the roc now if the pole now this ci upon s minus pi can give us two signals can give us two signals what all signals it can give it can give us ci e to power pi t ut right sided signal or it can give us the left sided signal u of minus t okay so it can give us a right sided signal or a left sided signal now the right sided signal when when uh, when the pole will give us right sided signal it will give us right sided signal when the roc is on the right side of the pole
when the roc is at the right side of the pole then it will give us this signal okay and when the roc is on the left side of the pole then it will give us the left sided signal okay great so these two are the points that we have to remember so these are the steps first of all we have to see the degree of numerator if it is more then we have to perform the division otherwise we can directly move to step 2 in step 2 we find out the poles the roots of the denominator and we break it into this we have to find out the coefficient ci we can find out ci by this formula very simple and then we can convert each pole into a signal it can be right sided it can be left sided okay great so let's move on now so let us find out the uh, let us take some examples okay let us take some examples suppose let me take a very simple example suppose we have this example this is already in the partial fraction format okay already break uh, broken into so we don't need uh, to do step 1 or step 2 we can directly find out the inverse so first of all we have to find out the poles so what are the poles there are two poles there are two poles one is at 2 one is at 4 okay one is at 2 one is at 4 so we have two poles uh, one is at 2 one is at 4 so we have three rocs we can see we can see three regions so one is sigma greater than 4 okay this region one is uh, between the two poles that is sigma 2 to 4 and uh, last is sigma less than 2 okay so these are the three regions now if we take the roc first of all let us say we take the roc sigma greater than 4 so we can see that if we take this roc sigma greater than 4 then both the poles will have the roc on the right side so both the poles will give us a right sided signal so this will give us a right sided signal we will get e to power 2t e to power 4t ut great second we take the sigma between minus 2 to 4 okay this is a minus 2 sorry uh, so, sorry 2 to 4 2 to 4 not minus 2 to 2 2 to 4 2 to 4 if we take then obviously we can see this region is on the left side of 4 right side of 2 uh, so 4 will give us a left sided signal and 2 will give us a right sided signal so 2 will give us a right sided signal e to power 2t ut but 4 will give us a left sided signal so it will be minus e to power 4t u of minus t okay now third this region sigma less than 2 sigma less than 2 so sigma less than 2 means third region sigma less than 2 so sigma less than 2 means uh, in this region we can see both the poles are having the left side uh, roc is on the left side of both the poles so both will give us a left sided signal this will give us a left sided signal minus u to power 2t u of minus t this will give us a left sided signal minus u to power 4t u of minus t so like this we can very easily uh, uh, get all of this okay so i hope uh, these points are very much clear to all of you great so let's move on let's move on so let's take one example let's take one example so we can see that the degree of the numerator is less than the degree of the denominator we don't need to divide it we can directly find out the we again we can directly move to step 2 so first of all it is 2s plus 3 divided by s plus 3 and s plus 2 okay we can find out the uh, roots of the denominator that is minus 3 and minus 2 okay so we can break it like this now we have to find out we have to convert it into partial fraction a upon s plus 3 b upon s plus 2 so we have to find out a and b we have to find out a and b so a is equal to 
a is equal to s plus 3 multiplied by this function and we will put s equal to minus 3. s plus 3 multiplied by 2s plus 3 divided by s plus 3 s plus 2. This and this will cancel out. We will put s equal to minus 3. So, when you put s equal to minus 3, we will get minus 6 plus 3 that is minus 3 and minus 3 plus 2 that is minus 1. So, we will solve it and we will get it is 3 only. Okay, now we will find out B. So, B is equal to S plus 2 multiplied by this function. And we will put S equal to minus 2. When you put S equals to minus 2, this will be minus 4 plus 3, that is minus 1. And this will be minus 2 plus 3, that is 1. So, this will come out to be minus 1. Okay. Sorry. This is S plus, sorry. This is S plus 3. Okay. So, now we can get this. Okay. So, this is the partial fraction form that we have found for this expression. Now, now, we have this expression 3 upon s plus 3 minus 1 upon s plus 2. So, we have two poles. We have two poles, one at minus 3, one at minus 2. One at minus 3, one at minus 2. Okay, so we have three ROC, sigma greater than minus 2, sigma less than minus 3, and we have one more, sigma minus 3 to minus 2. Okay, so we have three ROCs, we can find out. So, for ROC sigma greater than minus 2, we can see both the poles will give us right sided signal because ROC or the region is on the right side of both the poles. So, this will give us 3 e to power minus 3 t minus e to power minus 2 t u t. Okay, this is the case one. Now, if we take the middle one ROC, this one, minus 3 to minus 2, okay. So, we can see minus 2 will give us a left sided signal because the region is on the left side of the pole and minus 3 will give us a right sided signal. So, 3 to power minus 3 t, but this will give us a left sided signal. So, this will become plus e to power minus 2 t u of minus t. Now, if we take the ROC sigma less than minus 3, if we take the ROC sigma less than minus 3, then this pole is, uh, uh, this ROC is on the left side of both the poles. So, this will give us sigma less than minus 3. This will give us, both will be giving us the left sided signal. Okay, so both will give us a left side signal. So, this is how we can find out the inverse. Many a times question in the question, the ROC is given. So, we can easily find out the uh, inverse. Otherwise, we have to find out all the inverse. Okay, one very important thing that we can see is this single transform. Okay, the single transform can represent these three time domain signals. The single Laplace transform can correspond to three time domain signals depending on the ROC that we choose. Okay. So, it is not unique. It is not unique. So, we can see that uh, one single Laplace transform can correspond to the number of time domain signals equal to the number of ROCs which are possible. Okay. So, we can see that uh, one more concept I want to tell you here that the number of uh, so, one Laplace transform excess can correspond to number of time domain signals, number of time domain signals equal to 
equal to the number of time domain signals is equal to the number of ROCs, number of ROCs which are possible, number of ROCs which are possible. Okay, hello. So let's move on. Let's move to one more example. So this example here we can see that the degree of numerator and degree of denominator are equal. So we have to perform the division first. We have to divide first, then we will move on to the next step okay so we first of all we have to divide it so let us divide 5s square plus 3s plus 1 divided by we have to divide it with the denominator so what is the denominator denominator is s square plus 4s plus 3 so we multiply it by 5 simple 5s square plus 20s plus 15 divide minus this is give one so it is minus 17s minus 14 okay so this is the remainder so when we divide this we will get we will get the result that is 5 plus or minus 17s minus 14 divided by square plus 4s plus 3 okay so this is what we got now we can take the minus sign outside so this is 5 minus 17 s plus 14 divided by s plus 3 s plus 1 okay so now when we uh, we we find out the partial fraction of this now we will find the partial fraction so, what is the partial fraction of this? So, this will come out to be 5 minus 18.5 divided by S plus 3. We can find out the partial fraction by simply following the steps that we have done. Okay. One point five divided by s plus one. So we have two poles, minus one and minus three, and uh, we'll find out the ROC and then we'll solve it. Okay. So we have the poles at minus one and minus three. So sigma greater than minus one, or we have the uh, ROC minus three to minus one, or sigma less than minus three. Okay. So we have these three things okay so first of all let let's take the roc sigma greater than minus one so both will give us right sided signal we can convert it 5 minus 18.5 e to power minus 3t plus 1.5 e to power minus t ut We have to separately put ut, ut plus 1.5 e to power minus t ut. Okay, great. Okay, so this is uh, 1. If we take the ROC minus 3 to minus 1, then obviously uh, this will give us a left sided signal, uh, this will give us a left sided signal, this will give us a right sided signal. So, this will be 5 minus 18.5 e to power minus 3t ut 1.5 e to power minus t u of minus. And similarly, for the last one, sigma less than minus 3, both will give us a left sided signal. Both will give us a left sided signal. It will be 18.5. So like this we can easily find out the inverse very easily okay so these are the steps for finding the inverse okay okay so one property for laplace transform which was left which i actually forgot to tell you is this property right um,
if xt has laplace transform x of s then xt upon t will have laplace transform x of s integration from s to infinity ds so just remember this property it might be used somewhere it might get used somewhere okay great so now let's move on to a very very important topic for gate that is analysis of the lti systems using the laplace transform okay so now we will do the system analysis using laplace transform okay so suppose we have any system uh, any lti system which is represented by the uh, difference equ differential equations okay so whenever we have any LTI system using differential equation, we use Laplace transform for solving. So, first of all, let me, uh, let us recall the LTI systems. So, the LTI systems are those, LTI systems are those in which we actually use the uh, convolution for solving. So, we have the LTI system whose impulse response is known to us. We provide some input xn, okay, and we get some output. Sorry, h h t x t, okay. And we get some output that is y t, okay. So y t is equal to x t convolve h t, okay. Now if we convert this whole a representation of the whole, this whole figure into uh, Laplace transform, then convert this into Laplace transform, then we get that the Laplace transform of HT is HS. Laplace transform of HT is HS. Laplace transform of input is XS. And Laplace transform of Output is Ys. Okay, Laplace transform of output is Ys. So input is Xs, output is Ys, and Hs is the Laplace transform of Ht. Okay. So from here we can see that since convolution in time domain is multiplication in Laplace domain, so we can see that so we can see that Ys is equal to Xs multiplied by hs okay xs multiplied by hs okay now now from here we can see that what is hs two or three points on hs hs is the laplace transform of ht first point hs is also called the transfer function of the system okay is called transfer function of the system one more point on hs from this equation we can get that hs is equal to from this point we can get that hs is equal to ys upon xs okay ys upon xs so we can say that hs or the transfer function of the system is equal to laplace transform of the output divided by laplace transform of the input okay so laplace transform of the output divided by laplace transform of the input is called hs here it is very important to note that initial conditions of the system is zero initial condition of the system is zero we have to assume that whenever we solve any system using transfer function then we assume that the initial condition of the system is zero okay now this is the differential equation in which the system is represented okay this is the differential equation in which the system is represented so this is a for example let me take an example for you suppose we have a differential equation like this double derivative of yt single derivative of yt yt is equal to xt suppose this is the differential equation in which the 
system is represented okay now we can simply take the laplace we can solve the system using laplace transform so if we say that the laplace transform of yt is ys then double derivative of yt will have laplace transform equal to s square ys single derivative will have s ys and this will have ys is equal to xs okay and from here we can see what is ys upon xs here from here we can see what is ys upon xs it will be equal to 1 upon s square plus s plus 1 okay s square plus s plus 1 this is what the ys upon xs or the transfer function of the system is so simply take the laplace transform and we can get the transfer function of the system so many a times the differential equation is given and we have to find out the transfer function this is the simple step that we can follow now from the transfer function we have to find the properties of the system okay so we know the transfer function of the system suppose transfer function is given so first of all what is transfer function the transfer function of the system is laplace transform of ht and obviously since it is a laplace transform so it will have two things one expression and other roc without roc laplace transform is incomplete so the transfer function hs will have some expression and roc okay so it will have some expression and roc both so from the given expression and roc we have to find the properties of the system okay the system is lti we know that but we have to find out the other properties of the system the other properties of the system that is we have to comment on the stability we have to comment on the causality okay so we have to comment on stability and causality two things we already know that the system is lti that's fine but we have to find out that whether the system is stable or causal or not okay so we have to work on it now let's move on so first of all let us see uh, how to find out that the system is causal non causal or anti causal we have to find out whether the system is causal non causal or anti causal okay so let us see the properties so let us recall from chapter 2 that for causality that for causality we need that ht or the impulse response should be zero for t less than zero for causality we need that ht should be zero for t less than zero that is time domain uh, the impulse response should be zero for t less than zero so we can see that it should be a right sided signal so ht should be a right sided signal now uh, there is one more point here i'll tell you but first of all let us see so we can say that ht should be a right sided signal now since ht is a right sided signal what kind of roc should hs have so we can say that hs must have hs must have roc sigma greater than something means of this format means it should be right sided okay so for right sided remember or recall the properties of roc that we know okay so hs must have roc of the property that is sigma greater than something okay now now we have one more thing here so for for example ut ut has laplace transform 1 upon s sigma greater than 0 now if we take the time shifting property ut minus 1 so ut minus 1 means e to power minus s upon s sigma greater than 0 ut plus 1 e to power s upon s sigma greater than 0 
So we can see that in all the three cases we have ROC that is sigma greater than something. So all the three signals are right sided. But even though, even though this signal is right sided, this is not causal because this signal is starting from minus 1 and going to t equals to infinity. This signal is starting at t equal to minus 1. So this signal, all three are right sided. All three are right sided signal, but this is causal, this is causal, but this is non-causal. Third one is not causal. Because this signal is starting from t equal to minus 1. Okay. So, means this is not the only condition that we have to check for causality. We have to check one more condition. And what is that condition? For causality, we need to check one more condition. What is that condition? For causal, we need to check two conditions. First condition is the ROC condition. The ROC condition is sigma greater than something should be the format. This should be the format for the ROC. First thing. Second thing is the expression of HS or the Laplace transform expression should not have e to power positive s should not have e to power some positive s in the expression of hs okay the expression should not have e to power some positive yeah e to power some cs term in the expression and c c positive okay C positive. C negative is allowed. Okay. Some negative constant is allowed. No worries. And uh, no, con matlab, no, no term, no exponential term is allowed. Exponential term with negative s is allowed, but exponential term with positive s is not allowed. So these two things we have to check for causality. First is sigma greater than something should be the format of ROC. And second thing is expression should not have e to power cs form c greater than zero. Okay, so this is the condition for causality. Now let's move on to the condition for anti-causal. Okay, for anti-causal, for anti-causal, we need that HT should be zero. 40 less, 40 greater than 0, right? Means we need the signal to be left sided signal. We need the left sided signal, okay? We need the left sided signal. So, what is the property for left sided signal? The property for left sided signal is that ROC should be of the format sigma less than something. ROC should be of the format sigma less than something. But here also we have one more condition as we have in the causal case. As we have in the causal case. So what is that condition? Suppose UT, U of minus T, sorry, U of minus T. Minus 1 upon s, sigma less than 0. Yes, this is causal. Sorry, this is anti-causal. Uh, starting from minus infinity, ending at 0. Yes, this is anti-causal. U of minus t plus 1. U of minus t plus 1. This is minus e to power minus s upon s, sigma less than 0. Okay u of minus t minus 1 okay this is e to power s with the minus sign upon s sigma less than 0 so all three are left sided signal we know that all three are left sided signal okay so all three are left sided signal, but we have to check what are anti-causal. So, this is anti-causal, right? This signal, 
माइनस टी प्लस वन दिस इज वैलिड और दिस इज प्रेजेंट वेयर दिस माइनस टी प्लस वन इज पॉजिटिव सो माइनस टी प्लस वन इज पॉजिटिव मीन्स माइनस टी प्लस वन इज ग्रेटर देन जीरो सो दैट इज टी इज लेस देन वन टी इज लेस देन वन ओके टी इज लेस देन वन सो दिस इज नॉट कॉजल The not anti causal. Sorry, this is not anti causal because it is ex ex existing from minus infinity time to plus one time. Okay, this last one, this is anti causal. So we can see that we can see that there are two conditions. One condition is sigma less than something is one of the condition for ROC and for the expression, the expression, the expression can have uh, can have the zero power, no exponential term. can have the positive power of exponential but cannot have the negative power of exponentials okay so for anti causal we need two condition that is sigma should be less than something this should be the uh, format for roc okay this should be the format for roc and second is e to power cs in the expression e to power cx in the expression is allowed but c cannot be negative c not negative means negative constant is not allowed okay so this is the condition for anti causal so i hope you all will remember these two conditions for causality now let's move on to stability before moving to stability i would like to recall Uh, one very important condition of roc the first definition of roc that i told you in the starting of the chapter that was roc is that value of sigma roc is that value of sigma where x t e to power minus sigma t d t is less than infinity, or we can say that x t e to power minus sigma t is absolutely integrable. Okay, so it x t e to power minus sigma t is absolutely integrable. This is the condition that we know for the ROC. Now, if uh, we recall the condition for stability for Bebo stable system. For Bebo stable system, we know that we know that H T should be absolutely integrable. H T should be absolutely integrable. Okay, so we know that H T should be absolutely integrable for Bebo stable systems. Now, uh. So for absolutely integrable means h t is absolutely integrable. Now if we look at this condition, so what what we get for the R O C? What what condition we get for the R O C? So since h t is absolutely integrable, so we can say that h t e to power minus zero t is also absolutely integrable because e to power zero is one, right? E to power zero is one. So we can say that. So we can say that. since h t is absolutely uh, integrable is a condition for stability of the system thus we can say that thus we can say that the roc must include sigma equal to 0 this implies roc must include sigma equal to 0 okay so this is the condition for the roc this is the condition for roc for the stable system so for stability we need that roc must contain sigma equal to 0 and what is sigma equal to 0 if you go uh, and observe the 2d plane the s plane the complex plane then we can see that this is sigma axis and this is j omega axis this is j omega axis okay so we can say that we can say that This sigma equal to zero means sigma equal to zero means j omega axis. Okay, so directly if we conclude, 
directly if we conclude then we can say that then we can say that the condition for stability the condition for stability is the condition for stability is what is the condition for stability the condition for stability is roc of hs must include the j omega axis okay this is the condition for the stability okay so what is the condition for causality generally we are causal and stable are the two important conditions causality means roc should be sigma greater than something first thing and second thing exponential positive powers of s not allowed third stability stability we need that the roc of hs must include the j omega axis that's it these two are the conditions for the uh, stability and causality okay now causal and stable system like me we are we want to mix the two we want to mix causality and stability okay so for causality the signal is right sided okay the signal is right sided so the roc is of the format sigma greater than real part of the greatest pole real part of the greatest pole okay or we can say that real part of the rightmost pole if you remember the exact statement real part of the rightmost pole real part of the rightmost pole okay sigma greater than real part of the rightmost pole and since we need cause stable also we need stable also so we want that roc include the j omega axis roc must include the j omega axis so we need these two conditions for stability and causality together now if we say that if we say that roc must include the j omega axis roc must include the j omega axis and for causality the roc is sigma greater than the rightmost pole so we can say that the rightmost pole should be on the left half of the s plane the left the rightmost pole should be on the left side of this line then only then only both the conditions will be satisfied repeating the point again suppose this is the j omega axis and this is the rightmost pole this is the rightmost pole so rightmost pole has to be on the left half then only then only sigma greater than real part of the rightmost pole can include the j omega axis okay one more thing repeating the point again sigma greater than real part of the rightmost pole we will include the j omega axis only when the rightmost pole is on the left half of the s plane okay so we can say that stable and causal together stable and causal together need that need that rightmost pole should have negative real part should have negative real part okay so rightmost pole should have the negative real part this is the required condition for the uh, causality and stability now since the rightmost pole has has a negative real part so we can say that all the poles must have negative real part okay so the most important condition is all the poles must have negative real part okay all the poles must have negative real part this is the required condition for stable and causal 
so now let's see few examples one or two examples okay so this is the transfer function h is given to us this is the transfer function given to us okay so we can see that from here the transfer function s square minus s minus 6 from here we can see that one upon s minus 3 s plus 2 okay so we have two poles we have two poles one at 3 one at minus 2 So how many ROCs are possible? First of all, we can see that there are three ROCs which are possible. The first ROC is sigma greater than three. Second ROC is sigma minus two to three, and the last is sigma less than minus two. Okay, so these three are the ROCs which are possible. Now, first thing, if we take sigma greater than three as the ROC, if we take sigma greater than three as the ROC, then we can see that this will be sigma greater than right uh, sigma greater than uh, rightmost pole real part of the rightmost pole so this is causal okay this is causal so this will give us a causal system but but this system will be unstable why it will be unstable because this roc sigma greater than 3 does not include the j omega axis so it will be causal but unstable okay next we talk about this sigma less than minus 2 sigma less than minus 2 means here the signal will be left sided signal or the roc is of the format sigma less than the real part of the leftmost pole leftmost pole so we can say that this is anti causal but this will be unstable also why unstable because this ROC also does not include the J omega axis. Now the third ROC that is minus 2 to 3, minus 2 to 3. This ROC will include the J omega axis, will include the J omega axis. The system will be stable, the system will be stable. But this ROC will give us a both sided signal, both sided signal. And thus this ROC will give us a non-causal signal, a non-causal system. But it will be stable non causal system but stable system okay so like this we can easily classify using the uh, by looking at the roc by looking at the transfer function we can find out the characteristic of the system okay we can find the characteristic of the system okay now in this question we have to check whether the corresponding lti system is causal and stable we have to check whether it is causal and stable yes or no so we can see that uh, from this equation s plus 3 s plus 2 we have two poles minus 2 and minus 3 okay so here it is given that the roc is sigma greater than minus 2 okay the roc is sigma greater than minus 2 now since the roc is sigma greater than minus 2 we can see that this is causal and it contains the j omega axis it contains the j omega axis so this is causal as well as stable okay this is causal as well as stable so answer is yes answer is yes okay so now let's move on to this one so LTI system is given to us. This is the differential equation which is given to us. Okay, we have to find out the ROC. Okay, we will not find out, we will not uh, do the inverse Laplace. We will simply do the uh, convert it, find out the Laplace transform and then we will find out the ROCs corresponding to stable, causal and uh, uh, neither stable nor causal. So let's see. So first of all, we will convert it into the differential equation into the Laplace. So S square Ys minus s y s minus 2 y s is equal to x s 
ओके सो फ्रॉम हियर वी कैन सी दैट वाई एस अपॉन एक्सेस विल बी इक्वल टू वाई एस अपॉन एक्सेस विल बी इक्वल टू तो वाई एस अपॉन एक्सेस विल बी द ट्रांसफर फंक्शन दैट विल बी इक्वल टू वन अपॉन एस स्क्वायर माइनस एस माइनस टू नाउ हेयर वी कैन सी दैट वी हैव टू पोल्स एस माइनस टू एस प्लस वन सो वी हैव टू पोल्स वन एट टू वन एट माइनस वन वी हैव टू पोल्स वन एट टू वन एट माइनस वन ओके तो Now we have three ROCs. Okay, we have three ROCs. Sigma greater than two. Sigma greater than two will be causal, but unstable. We will have causal but unstable. So this will be causal but unstable. So what is the ROC for this? We know the ROC. We can easily find out the inverse, right? We know the ROC. We can find out the inverse. So for causal, we have the ROC sigma greater than two. Okay. Now for this minus one to two. this will be stable but non causal because it contains the g omega axis it is stable but it is non causal third is sigma less than minus 1 this one is anti causal but unstable okay so this will be case number 3 this will be case number 2 for us and this will be case number 1 for us okay so like this we can find out the roc and we can simply find out the inverse and we can get the answer for Uh, this kind of questions okay so this is the uh, system analysis using laplace transform properties of the systems using laplace transform okay so in the next chapter we will be starting the continuous time fourier transform thank you bye bye